and it is on the agenda for uh, board review uh, during the board meeting. So, Mr. Cox, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Dr. Stockton. Uh, I'm very pleased to be here tonight to present the uh, proposed 2013-2014 budget uh, uh, in our second public hearing. Uh, the, uh, but, however, before I get into it, I want to take a moment and recognize Darren Rice, our Director of Finance, and Janice Stowers, our Senior Accountant, who really headed up the team effort to uh, put this budget together. Uh, they've done an outstanding job, and I really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, each year as we develop our budget, we develop a theme for the budget. And this year, our theme was uh, getting back to meeting the needs for continued growth. Uh, before we get into the actual budget, I'd like to take a moment and, and review some of the highlights of the year that just ended. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of these. I will point out that we have a very strong fund balance. We started the year with 28% of our budget in the fund balance, and it continues to be strong. Uh, item number four is I want to point out because we're very proud of this. Three years ago, the state initiated a new financial and academic performance Account accountability system called the FAST system, Financial Integrity Rating System of Texas. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, the Financial Allocation Study of Texas, uh, which is the FAST system. We are, we are one of only 11 ISDs in the state that received a perfect five-star rating in all three years that this has been given. And it's put together by the State uh, of Texas Comptroller's Office uh, it is a, a new approach to accountability, which is becoming very common now. And historically, accountability systems looked only at academic performance. Today, you will see that the accountability systems are, are recognizing also the importance of financial performance. And CISD can be proud that we have excelled in both areas. Uh, I also want to point out that we uh, uh, reduced the tax rate last year, uh, or this year that's just ended. Uh, the tax rate was a one-half cent lower, and uh, we'll have some good news in this area uh, later in this presentation as well. Uh, and finally, it's important to, to, to point out that Conroe ISD balanced its budget the last two years in the biennium in which the uh, state reduced funding our funding by $21.3 million. And we were able to balance our budget both years without any layoffs uh, during that period of time. We're proud of that. Uh, we also, each year as we prepare the budget, we like to take a moment and compare our profile for our budget to the state average profile as, a, as, it, were, as it relates to a percent of budget by function. And I will tell you that 10 years ago when I started looking at this, CISD put less than the state average as a percent of the budget into instruction. Today, that situation has changed dramatically. Today, we are putting 62.1% of our budget into instruction, while the state average is 29.3. That 2.8% difference represents $10 million in our budget. So if we were budgeting in instruction at the same percent as the state, we would be putting $10 million less in instruction than we are. And basically what we've done, been able to do over the last 10 years is improve our productivity in other areas and take that savings and put it into instruction. And we, that was done uh, specifically uh, as an objective, and we've been successful at doing that. And we think it's a key to our ability to maintain high academic results. Uh, Areas where we have reduced our spending is in central administration. You can see we're less than half of the state average as a percent of our budget. And in plant maintenance and operations, 10 years ago, we were above the state average area, but we have worked hard to become more efficient, especially in the area of energy management. And we, we have exceeded over $5 million a year in saving energy management alone. Uh, that's been a that money has gone directly into instruction. So these are important things to point out, and they're 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 indicators as to how we've been able to restructure our budget to become 
more efficient while while improving our outcomes at the same time. And that is our goal is to become to have excellent academic outcomes in a cost effective manner and we believe we're achieving that. Tax rate, we know our patrons are always concerned about tax rate. You can see that uh, also 10 years ago we were not the lowest tax rate in this group. And these are this is our peer group, other large districts uh, in the, in our geographic area. And you can see that our tax rate is 21 cents, 21.1 cents lower than the average of these other five districts, which are Spring, Katy, Humble, Cyfair, and Klein. All of these are large districts, and we compare extremely favorably, and we expect, we have improved that every year, and we expect to improve it again. All right, this is a picture of our fund balance. You can see that it's gotten stronger uh, every year. The red part represents uh, points in time in which we chose to uh, take some money out of our fund balance uh, because we had excess capacity in the fund balance to perform capital projects and avoid using new debt to achieve, complete those projects. Uh, and we feel that this, is a, this has been cost effective both from a debt management standpoint uh, and also managing our, our fund balance. And looking at, the, and an, we always like to take a snapshot look at our fund <clears throat> balance as we end the year. Uh, <clears throat> we're projecting a budget this year of 369.1 million. Our objective is to maintain a fund balance between 16 and 24 percent of our budget. So you can see that the low end would be 59.1, the high end 88.6. Right now, we're projecting an ending unassigned fund balance of about $93 million. So we're slightly over the high end. Uh, we're, we're comfortable with that. It gives us a little bit of flexibility if we need it, but we're certainly in a strong position. Another thing we look at each year is our property values. Uh, you can see that we live in a very uh, economically uh, healthy area. Uh, once again, our, our the last few years since the downturn, our our assessed value growth has risen steadily each year. Uh, this year, we're looking at 8.63% increase in assessed values. One thing I will point out is <coughs> most people in the public assume that, that the result, the revenue from that increased assessed value comes directly to Conroe ISD. In fact, the state actually offsets our funding based on the increase in our local funding. So. It, in a, it helps us, but the state, it helps the state more because it reduces the amount of money that the state has to give us. It does help us on our debt service side. We have to fund all of our debt service ourselves. But on the m and side, ultimately, the state will get that money back. <clears throat> you can see that our enrollment growth uh, uh, continues to uh, be steadily up. However, looking uh, at the actual numbers, we do continue to have strong en enrollment growth, but it is slowing. Uh, and I think that's an interesting thing for us to pay attention to. You can see that uh, in 2011, 2010, it was 1,633. Each year since then, it has dropped slightly. We're, project we're budgeting this year based on a growth of 1,100. We think it's gonna level out for a while in this area but we're not exactly sure. But we are, we continue to get strong growth, but not as, not as large as we were seeing. Revenue increase this year. We really got a surprise this year. We, <clears throat> we went into this legislative session uh, not expecting the state to uh, uh, reinstitute some of the funding that they had cut uh, two years ago. Uh, we thought that they would wait until the, the resolution of the lawsuits related to school funding. But in the middle of the, the session, things changed. And so all of a sudden, they uh, took a position of, 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 of replacing some of the funding that they had cut two years ago. And in fact, they replaced approximately two-thirds of the funding that they cut two years ago. So. 
all of a sudden we found ourselves in a position of, of having one of the strongest years of increased funding we'd ever seen. Uh, and that's good news, bad news. The, the good news is they replaced the funding. The bad news is they did it all in the first year. So uh, you'll see later that we, we're going to have excessive funding in the first year, but we're going to need some of that funding to balance our budget in the second year. Uh, but we are looking at a very strong growth in revenue in the first year of $40.1 million. But we will need to preserve some of that funding to balance our budget in the second year. Once we realized that we were going to have a strong revenue year and, a, and strong funding from the state, we sat down and said, okay, what do we want to accomplish for this budget? And we identified five objectives. Meet the needs for the 2013-14 school year. Uh, really look hard at the academic needs in the classroom and address those. Provide a strong salary increase for CISD employees. Provide for additional safety and security, particularly for our younger students. Preserve funding for the 2014-15 school year, which is what I was alluding to a, a moment ago. And provide a tax <laughs> decrease for CISD patrons. So those were the objectives that we had in mind as we worked through our budget. These are the specific budget increases that you will see in the budget. Uh, first and uh, on the first line is the uh, addressing the strong salary increase for our employees. Uh, we, we have in this budget a 3.25% increase on the midpoint and a sub rate increase. Uh, the, the 3.25% for employees represents 8.9 million, and the sub rate represents approximately 500,000. Uh, the second item is health fund increase of $2 million. This is the one area that we have been uh, struggling with. It's been a challenge. It's been our health fund costs. They continue to increase. We don't expect that trend to change. Uh, we ha we're, we're putting an additional $2 million in from the district in this budget, and quite frankly, it may not be enough. It most likely won't be enough, so we'll probably be coming back and putting more in at some point once we see how things are tracking. The employees are, are increasing their contribution by a million, so we're adding a total of $3 million funding to the health fund. Uh, additional personnel, both for growth of 1,100 students and additional needs is $9.2 million. Uh, we adjusted, we made stipend adjustments primarily in bilingual of 765. We were able to reckon, to take 1.3 million out of the budget as we reconciled our actual payroll to our budget for the current year. Uh, we're con we converted 11 technology aides at intermediate schools to teacher professionals, uh, which puts, uh, added some horsepower to the intermediate schools. Uh, <clears throat> we have we increased intervention mm -hmm. funds, uh, both in summer school, CNI reading, and primarily in the secondary area. That's where the bulk of this went. Uh, we had suspended purchasing of fine arts uniforms and district-wide vehicles for a year. We reinstated that in this budget. Uh, we increased campus and department budgets. Uh, we had Obviously, with 1,100 new students and, and two new schools, we'll have, we have to increase our transportation costs somewhat. We purchased some software, and we uh, moved some money into the facility maintenance to uh, hopefully be able to do more work out of the maintenance budget and less out of uh, using bond money uh, for certain things uh, where possible. And finally, once again, I'm happy to say that even though we're opening two new schools, we're going to be able to reduce our utilities budget once again to add additional savings on top of the five million that we've already saved. This is a detailed analysis of the personnel additions. The top line is the normal growth for 1,100 students. And then we had about $2 million in additions identified uh, uh, as we looked at the needs of the district, uh, see we added five curriculum coaches, uh, 11 uh, uh, teachers, comp ed teachers, uh, elementary and intermediate, five high school career and technology teachers. 
we added five police officers to patrol elementaries, uh, one police officer for each feeder zone. This is the first time we've ever had dedicated police officers for elementary school. And we think this is a real positive addition to, to protect and serve our, our youngest students. I'm proud of that. We also added a sergeant and a prevention control officer. Uh, and then you can see we had several other specialized additions and personnel. <clears throat> We've already approved the teacher hiring schedule. Uh, new teacher salaries will start at, or te new teachers will start at 47.3. All teachers uh, will receive a 3.25% a increase on the midpoint, uh, which is $1,680 increase for all teachers. The projected budget, uh, you can see that the 12-13 budget was 342.5 million uh, we're projecting a 40 million increase in revenue trs on behalf uh, is uh, 3.5 now one thing i will point out here and this is important the state did step up to the plate and ignore and recognize that they needed to beef up funding to trs to make it put it in a secure position so the state upped its contribution to trs and that's what this is right here the interesting this is state funded but it runs each district as it, as they allocate that funding to each district they have to run it through their budget so it actually is an increase to our budget even though it's being funded by the state uh, the actual budget is on the expense side and here Last year's budget was 342.5 million. We have the 3.25% salary increase, which is nine and a half million. All the other expenses that we looked at earlier is 13.6 million, plus the TRS on behalf increase, which is three and a half, for a total of 369.1. And that's our budget, 369.1. So you can see that we will have a surplus this year. However, as you'll see a little moment, a little bit later, we'll need most of that to fund next year's budget. Uh, this does represent a 7.8% budget increase, which is higher than normal. But if you look at our experience and history over the last three years, four years, you can see that this actually represents only a 2.9% increase over the last three year period. The reason being that we had a $340 million budget in 10-11. The next year, the state cut our funding. And so our budget, even though we had a large increase in students, our budget actually went down. So over the last three years, we've actually averaged an increase of only 2.9% a year. Uh, but most of that increase has come, this will be in this coming year. So we do believe that this is reasonable given where we came from. The budget, I'm not going to go through all of the detailed functions, but you can see that it totals up uh, down at the bottom to 369.1 million. Uh, I will point out that this consists of 61% funding from local taxes and 39% from the state. So. We are still getting funded almost 40% of our funding from the state, but as our local values go up, this will decline. This is our famous uh, people intensive business chart. Uh, you can, the blue is uh, payroll, that's salaries and benefits. 88.4% of our cost is in salaries and benefits. So. Clearly, this is an extremely people-intensive operation. The next largest category is contracted services. The biggest item in there is utilities, but it's coming down. Uh, although we're adding school, so that's offsetting. But, uh, supplies and materials, uh, the biggest item there is fuel. And finally, equipment and other, the biggest item in that is insurance. So those, are, those four areas represent... Uh, uh, a large percentage of our cost. 
I mentioned the 2014-15 funding. Uh, this is an estimate of the revenue that we'll have available to us, and you can see that $17 million surplus is in there. We're actually projecting only an increase of $6.8 million in funding from state and local sources next year. Uh, so we'll need that, we'll add that $17 million of the current of the surplus we're having the current budget. We also, the other piece of the TRS funding is coming from local funding by the district. And one of the other pieces of their funding is that they, uh, going forward, beginning in 1415, each school district will be required to contribute 1.5% of its total salaries to TRS. The state, because they put this on us without any notice, the state is going to pay for it in 1415. But after 1415, the districts, they were being told that the districts will have to pay for it without any special funding. So, uh, we'll have to wait and see how that goes. But, but uh, that is the other piece of the funding uh, solution for TRS is one from the state, one piece from the state, and one piece from the district. So, uh, as well as uh, each employee is contributing slightly more as well. So. All of those combined uh, uh, are, this, are the state's effort to uh, solidify the funding for TRS. And, and I want to say that uh, <coughs> TRS is financially more sound than virtually than any other pension plan in the country, most likely. So you should be happy to be in TRS. But even that needs reinforcement occasionally. Now the pro forma budget, uh, if we have a 3% salary increase, that's 8.1 million, 1,100 student growth, 7.2 million in, in employees, 1.5% uh, TRS contribution that we talked about before, health fund contribution, we've got 1 million, that will could easily be more and likely will be more. Uh, and then other expenses. So we're talking about at least $20 million in a basic pro forma budget for next year. So you can see that we're going to need a good portion of that of that surplus that exists in the budget today uh, going forward. Now the property taxes, uh, we're proposing a half cent reduction again for the second year in a row in the property tax, uh, bringing our tax from a dollar twenty-nine to a dollar twenty-eight and a half cents. Uh, this is forty-seven and a half cents <coughs> lower than it was in two thousand five, two thousand six. Uh, we're we believe we're one of the few districts that have maintained the bulk of that reduction uh, that that the state provided in uh, in, in two thousand five and six, and that's that's our objective, and we're trying doing our best to stay with it. And then finally, this, as I mentioned before, this is the second of two public hearings. Uh, we're also probably one of the few districts that has two public hearings on our budget. Uh, with that, I'll go to Dr. Stock. Okay, at this time, if anybody would like to make a comment, please approach the podium, state your name, and make your comments. Anybody? Okay, that concludes our public hearing. Thank you. I call this meeting of the Conroe Independent District Board of Trustees to order. Let the record show that a quorum of members is present, that this meeting has been duly called, and that notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meeting Act, Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code, Chapter 551. Time is now 625. If you would please stand with me as David and William leads in our invocation and Scott and Kidd in our Pledges of Allegiance. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we humbly come before you asking for wisdom, discernment, and most of all grace as we conduct the business of our schools. Let us put self aside and your children first in all that we do. Thank you for providing protection over our children, our staff, and administration during the summer months. We ask that you continue to bless them as they begin this new school year. Let our children be eager to learn and our teachers enthusiastic in their instruction, knowing that they serve you with their work. 
Father, we give thanks for all that you've done and all that you've yet to do. Lastly, we ask for forgiveness of sins, confessed and unconfessed. That's not hinder this prayer. Let us all say, Amen. Join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state, under God, one. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Thank you, Mr. Kidd. <clears throat> Item 2A, Awards and Recognition. Special District Recognition, Mr. Gregory Ship, 2013 Administrator of the, of the Year, Career and Technology Association of Texas. Dr. Stark. So Mrs. Drummond, would you come up and introduce that item? Good evening, Mr. Sanders, Dr. Stockton, and members of the board. Mr. Greg Ship has been in Conroe ISD for three and a half years. He is our career and technical education coordinator. And just recently, on July the 16th, was selected as the 2013 CTE Administrator of the Year at the annual Career and Technical Association of Texas Awards Luncheon. This annual recognition is aligned with the National Association for Career and Technical Education Awards Program and promotes excellence in career and technical education by recognizing CTE administrators who have made extraordinary contributions to the field and programs that exemplify the highest standards. Prior to coming to CISD, Mr. Ship was an agricultural science teacher Central Region Coordinator for Council Substitute Program for the Texas Department of Criminal Justice, a counselor for the Reading to Res Reduce Recidivism Program in the Wyndham School System, an Education Specialist at Region 6 Education Service Center, Principal at Raven School and Gulf Coast Trade Center, and Vice President of Education for Gulf Coast Trade Center. In addition, he has remained an active volunteer, serving as a member of service clubs and community organizations. Mr. Ship will represent Conroe ISD and the state of Texas in the Region 4 ACTE Awards Program. Region 4 is made up of Texas, New Mexico, Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Louisiana. And we know that Mr. Ship will represent us well. At this time, would you please join me in recognizing Mr. Greg Schiff, 2013 CTE Administrator. Thank you, Ms. Drummond. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm, I'm deeply honored and, and humbled to be before you this evening. And as I was reflecting on what I might share this evening uh, about this recognition, a, a recent conversation I had with a friend of mine who is a longtime career in technical education uh, administrator came to mind. He called me up and said, congratulations, Greg. He said, what did you do to separate yourself from the other candidates? And I thought about that for a minute. Here's what I shared with him. When you can appear before an interview committee and you can talk about your superintendent's vision for business and industry partnerships, his vision our internships for our students, and most importantly, his belief that all means all. When you can talk about your school board and their commitment to career and technical education in the form of state-of-the-art and industry standard facilities, and their high expectations that every student exiting our program have a post-secondary prep education enhanced by an occupationally specific skill, that's what separated this humble candidate from the other candidates. Dr. Stockton, this award is a tribute to you, your leadership team, Dr. Chris Hines, Gail Drummond, and to you, board members, for your support and for your vision for career and technical education. And I'm deeply humbled to be a part of the CISD team. Thank you. Mr. Ship, 
We are very proud that you're part of our fantastic administration here at Conroe. And as usual, we're very humble in your praise of everybody else. But we know you're the man that's implementing the vision, and we thank you for that. The Board of Trustees hereby recognizes Gregory Ship, 2013 Administrator of the Year, Career and Technology Association of Texas, August 20th, 2013. Congratulations. <laughs> That's always fun. Next is item 2B, citizen participation. Ms. Ferris, is anyone registered to address the board? All right, we will continue. Item 3 is our consent agenda. We have been asked to take out item 3H as a separate item in which we will do that. Uh, is there a motion on the rest of the consent agenda except item H? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? All opposed? Motion carries unanimous, unanimously. And now item 3H, uh, CSP number 33-017, property boiler and machinery, educators, legal liability, general liability, automobile liability, and physical damage and crime insurance. How would y'all like to address this one? <laughs> I guess since I'm the one that asked her to be pulled, I'm going to start. Okay, why don't you go um, ahead? I appreciate um, my the rest of the board members being to, uh, patient and tolerant of allowing me to ask some questions on this. I really had questions of our insurance consultant, I think, that did the evaluation as well as Mr. Cox. Um, maybe just points of clarification for me so that I'm not confused when I'm voting. Um, this is Joe Blasey, uh, uh, insurance consultant. <laughs> Time flies when you're having fun. Um, my questions um, are particularly around um, TAPS, uh, that quote, and I did get the financials, I think, that Mr. Fox forwarded um, regarding that. In order to do business in the state of Texas, um, doesn't that particular carrier have to meet certain reserve criteria? Actually, they don't. They're a self-insurance pool, and like any self-insurance pool, and there are several, there are, there are no set criteria regarding solvency provisions or other financial security metrics. And do you do business with them? Or do you recommend yeah. them to districts or other providers? Yes, historically, I think TAPS has been in uh, existence now for probably a decade or so. And I think they represent probably 80 school districts. So they have a significant number of school districts. Do they represent any our uh, Yes, yeah. they, they have some larger and, districts. And sure. I guess my question was that have you recommended them as a consultant? Historically, I have, sure. Okay. And then if they don't have state criteria, do they have reinsurance for their liabilities? Yes. My understanding is that they are reinsured by A-rated insurance carriers that are regulated and rated. Okay. And so in your review, did you take that in consideration that while they may be smaller in, in asset size, that they have reinsured to bring them up to, um, I guess, not solvency, but at least some sure. reasonable sem semblance First of stability. <laughs> well, I'm just saying some stability, because I mean, obviously we don't want a company that has not reinsured um, to protect themselves. That's correct. Um, so they do have reinsurance. Absolutely. Okay, and you have recommended them before, because their premium is substantially uh, less, it appears. Um, they did, it's 12,000. No, it's about 20, yeah. 
I wanted to follow the Dr. Stockton motto of every little dollar counts. <laughs> so, um, because when um, they quoted for the general liability and then for the, and their premium was, let's see, one of, yeah, their premium was included into the educator um, liability, then it was like a $4,000 difference. Um, on the crime limit and deductible, TASB, did TASB not quote that? Um, I noticed the note that says optional deductibles, but it's blank in the comparison. TASB cannot offer crime coverage unless they also offer the property insurance, and they did not offer a quote. And so they didn't them. offer the quote. So what constitutes a claim under the crime? Typically, it's a, a loss of money or securities. Uh, it can be either uh, theft or miscellaneous disappearance and destruction. It could be in like theft, that sort of thing. But it so if we went with TASB, how is that liability covered? What we were envisioning there is, since it is a more or less a property loss, first-party property loss to the district, the district's property insurance agent would uh, place that policy. That's what's shown there. And so that would go under the ACE or the Travelers? That's right. It would go under the uh, the SOULS renewal okay. option. That's right. Okay. And um, going back a few years, and thank you, Mrs. Gladys, for clarifying it. Um, back in 2003, we did have some claims, and Mrs. Gladys did kind of clarify, I think all of the board received that. Um, and I did speak to the former board member that was involved in that. Um, his recollection was that it wasn't necessarily the easiest thing to resolve. Sure. Um, as far as application of the deductible and separating out um, how the deductibles and the limits were applied. What's your experience been with claims? Well, Let's just say that insurance carriers and pools have their, their good years and their bad years. And, and uh, you know, at that period in time, TASB was not necessarily uh, comfortable with a lot of these uh, educators' legal liability claims. Since then, particularly in the last few years, their coverage has become much broader. Uh, and they seem to be, their coverage intent is certainly to, to cover these types of claims. So, aside from, is, I guess, what's the basis of your recommendation of TASB over TAPS? Since there is a substantial premium difference, if you feel, and you do recommend TAPS to other um, districts, um, and you feel like their uh, stability or whatever is covered by reinsurance, why the recommendation for the higher premium versus the lower? I, I think it had a, there are a couple of factors at play, not the least of which was that the TAPS option has a higher auto deductible. It's 1500 Right, higher. right. And when we did some analysis on historic and expected auto claims, it kind of ate up the potential savings we'd experience by selecting the TAPS proposal over the TASB proposal. So that was you know, monetarily speaking, that was probably the biggest factor in the recommendation. Uh, TASB Did you ask TASB to do the $2,500 deductible? Said that perhaps the premium could be lowered? I believe we did go back to them for that option also. And did they say no? They did, initially. Initially? Yeah, okay. we haven't heard, and we never received a response from them on the $2,500 deductible. That's not very good business. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. That's interesting because I would think that we would want a comparison of kind of the apples to apples, and if they were interested in doing the business, they would be interested in responding. Um, okay. That's the gist of my question. Okay. Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Which carrier? The <laughs> <laughs> word is consent, right? So, no, this is the off. Uh, well, the motion, I guess. It's item H. It's item H. So you're 
moving to approve as, as presented. Correct. We, we All right. excluded it. Thank you, Senator. Let me just comment. We, we made a group Thank decision you. to recommend this. We're not married to it. And, uh, it uh, we felt it was the best recommendation as a group. But uh, we're, you know, there's obviously there's discretion. Uh, but uh, there, you, can build, you can build a case for your part. Well, I, I mean, I just felt don't. more comfortable with that. Well, I mean, obviously, you you know, you, you just made the statement you feel more comfortable in that. I just felt more comfortable in asking all the questions sure. to further evaluate. I'm not that as knowledgeable as the consultant, but it just seemed like there were some obvious differences. And if it was just the stability of the company or their history, but as a consultant, you're recommending them to other, you know, other districts of similar size. And again, if TASB didn't respond on the deductible question, to me, that's kind of a no brainer. If you want the business, you do it. But whether it's 20, you know, 20,000 or 200,000, I mean, I would like to save the money if it's, if all things being equal. So that was my point in asking the question. So, but that was it. And you do back. have you do have a motion, motion on the right. floor. We did so. go back, and I I I'd forgotten about. It. We did look at the incidents we had about uh, about and it, it, it the tends to wash the, based on the story. But I, it, it, Well, my, 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 you all did your due diligence, and I, I just wanted to do my. Okay. I, I, if I could, just real quickly, we did enter into the into the deliberation. As Dan says, uh, we met about it, and, and, and initially we were torn as to which way to go. Uh, it, it certainly, as Dan says, you can make a case either way, and so we looked at a lot of different things, and eventually had to make a recommendation of some type. But as, as Dan says, we're not married to either one. Make a case up. All right, we have a motion to approve as presented. Consent agenda. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Now, is there any more discussion? Second. All right. If there's no discussion, we'll vote. All those in favor and all those opposed and any abstentions? Secretary, I abstain. All right, and the motion Thank carries. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you, gentlemen. Great job. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. All right, item 4A, elementary and secondary summer school report. Dr. Stockton. It's that time of year. We're going to hear from Mrs. Drummond and Dr. Gibson uh, on the elementary and secondary summer school report. Good evening, President Sanders, board members, and Dr. Stockton. Uh, this evening, Mrs. Drummond and I would like to share um, the, our uh, summaries of our summer school programs. We'll start with the elementary. Um, before, we, before we get started, I'd like to introduce to you some very special people. We had approximately 3,000 students that attended this past summer. That was about 770 more students than we had last summer this time. As you know, it takes a lot of coordination for that, for that to happen. You, typically, that coordination is happening when school is still in session. So um, we often wonder how we squeeze it all in, but we do find a way to squeeze it all in. But I would first like to identify Mrs. Edith Upshaw, if you would stand up, please. She is our, <laughs> she is our Director of Curriculum Instruction and Staff Development. Uh, she coordinated all the, many all the many moving pieces, and I can assure you that our summer programs are equivalent to the rigor of our daily classroom, and that is a tribute to our CNI department. And also, by coincidence, today was our district staff development day. And on a day like today, we move around 3,500 students uh, teachers. And that also takes a tremendous amount of work. And uh, I have had nothing but positive comments. And again, under Mrs. Upshaw's um, supervision. <laughs> I'd also 
would like to recognize uh, Mrs. Pam Zoda, if you, Dr. Zoda, excuse me. Uh, she is our Director of, of Federal Programs and Grants, and uh, her uh, uh, contribution to our summer school process is she finds all the funding sources, coordinates them, and she does also follow Dr. Stockton's philosophy of every penny counts. <laughs> so we have several programs that I'd like to share with you, but um, this is also a time that we showcase our assistant principals and we showcase their skills. Our summer school principals have to go through an interview process, and um, I would like to introduce them to you tonight. Um, our summer school principal for Armstrong was, is Mrs. Viviana Harris. And Viviana currently is the assistant principal at Ford. And um, I'd like to thank you for all of your hard work. I don't see David Kite. Did he slip in? He is here. There he is. All right. <laughs> I'd like to acknowledge uh, Mr. David Kite. And he was our ESY um, principal at Armstrong. And he is our lead for adaptive PE. Hi, um, David. And Tammy Eldridge is not with us tonight, but she was the principal of Hauser. We have Christina Myers, who was the summer school's principal of Houston, and she is also the assistant principal at Houston. We have Mrs. Kim, uh, Kim Lanham, who was the assistant principal at Milam. And somewhere in her spare time, she also became Nate was named principal of Wilkerson Intermediate. Uh, Jerry Butler served as summer school principal at Reeves, and she is currently our, an assistant principal at Glenlock. We have Mrs. Teresa Waller, who was the assistant principal, who was the summer school principal at Grangerland and is the assistant principal at Grangerland. And Treva Madore, who is the assistant principal at Mitchell and served as principal at Mitchell. And Mr. Larry Bradfield, who served as principal at Travis and is assistant principal at Grangerland Intermediate. Thank you all very much. One of our, one of our largest programs is called the Passport to Learning in, in our tuition-based KidQuest academic program. This program focuses on a very intensive targeted reading and mathematics instruction with a twist of science integration. This ran from June 11th through July 3rd. It's a half, a half day program. And we had 972 students that attended this program. Our bilingual program is a mandatory program for our pre-K through K students, but it has been our history to add an additional grade level. Uh, in the past, we have um, added our first graders as a, supplementar, as a supplemental summer program. This year, we also extended it to second grade and we uh, added about 350 more students. This is our largest, this was our largest summer school program with 1,283 students. Camp STAR is our intensive targeted reading and math inter inter intervention program for our fifth grade students that have to take the third administration of the reading and or math star assessment. And we had approximately 484 students that attended. And this was our newest and uh, our pilot program. And this was a program that we added this year. Mitchell was, uh, was the home base and we offered what we called high interest, interest courses um, we had a total of 147 students that participated, and these students had fun as well as um, gained additional skills. Our extended school year services are designed to minimize the loss of acquired critical skills of students with disabilities who have, who have demonstrated significant regression or recruitment patterns. Participation in ESY is based on an ARD committee and we ran two sessions this summer at Armstrong and a total of 48 students participated. This is our budget of expenditures and um, funding sources. As you can see, the majority of our funds are from our state and federal sources and our local sources as well and our tuition based uh, for a total expenditure of 1,212,525. 
And then finally, we had, we had about 2,934 uh, 2 students. Was, they, it was served, they were served by 223 teachers and nine administrators. Good evening, Mr. Sanders, Dr. Stockton, and members of the board. Uh, Dr. Gibson always does such a fabulous job. She gives you all those definitions, and I'm not going to repeat them. They are very good. Also, I, I would like to commend our CNI department. Without their support, we would not be able to pull all of this off. Um, our coordinators work with teachers and develop the curriculum for our summer programs. Um, and they work very hard, and as Dr. Gibson said, that's during the school year when they're doing all of the other things that they do. So we're very, very appreciative, Edith, and if you'll please pass that word along. Okay, it gives me pleasure to tell you about our programs. And the first thing is to introduce these very accomplished assistant principals who serve as principals for us during the summer. Our district high school program was held at McCullough Junior High Campus. Mr. Wes Henson, who is currently an assistant principal at Conroe High School, was our principal of that program. And also at McCullough Junior High, we had the extended school year program, and Mr. Greg Coleman is our principal for that program. Mr. Jeff Eldridge couldn't be here this evening, but he took the program at Conroe High School. We run um, some credit recovery there and um, accelerated program. At Knox Junior High, we have Mr. Keith Dupre. Keith is an assistant principal at Conroe High School currently, and he worked with students from Irons, Knox, McCullough, and York Junior High. And then at Washington Junior High, Mrs. Tamara Good was our principal. I don't know that, I don't see her this evening. And she serves students from Moorhead, Pete, and Washington Junior Highs. Very accomplished, and I couldn't do it without them. So um, the types of programs that we have are what you have seen in the past. We have high school initial credit, high school credit recovery. We have our online accelerated math program. Then we have junior high credit recovery and our eighth grade star academy, which is for those students who are in the eighth grade that need to take the third test administration for reading math. High school and junior high ESL academies. We also have a GED program that is housed at Hawk during the summer and the extended school year program. These are, give you the uh, courses that we had this summer for initial credit um, in math and then for our initial credit in other courses. We do offer a number of initial credit courses. Some did not make this summer. But as you can see, we continue. That US history dual credit is very popular. Uh, we ended up with, did we have three sections this summer or two? We only had two? Yeah, so it was, um, it's very popular. And then the Spanish three pre AP is popular. They're all just that. In summary, we had 2,630 course enrollments. 1,039 students attended the district high school programs that were at McCullough. 148 students attended the online accelerated math courses, and those courses actually began in May before school was out and went through the second week of July. 536 junior high students attended summer school. 47 students participated in the extended school year program 23 students attended GED classes, and 41 students participated in ESL for secondary. Approximately 95% of the high school courses taken were completed successfully, with 515 initial high school credits earned, and 333.5 repeat credits earned by high school students. This is our financial summary. Uh, we probably collected more intuition this summer than we ever have. Uh, we had more students enrolled in initial credit, which would be the reason for that. 
Our staffing summary remained about very similar to what we've had in past years. Um, and with this view, with five campuses, we feel like it's, it's very efficient. Our 2013 secondary summer school, we feel is a great success. We served 1,834 students at five locations with 124 staff. So summer school rocks. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Gibson and Mrs. Drummond. We appreciate all your hard work as well. All right, item 5A, naming process of new campuses, Dr. Stock. I'm going to ask Dr. Gibson to come back up to the podium. It's um, that time of year. We'll say good night to some of our folks. Good night. <laughs> good night. <laughs> again and tonight I'd like to share with you the naming process for two new elementary schools that will open in fall of 2014. Flex 14 is located on Beach Airport Road which is adjacent to Bosman Intermediate and Flex 16 is located on Fish, Fish Creek Thoroughfare in the Wood Forest community. Beginning tomorrow we will accept nominations from the public through October 11th. We will provide the nominations at the October board meeting and name the schools at the November board meeting. Information for, for this nomination process may be found on our website. All right. So we'll be back. We'll, we'll be, be back, back in October. All right. Thank you, Dr. Gibson. <laughs> item 5B, bond referendum update. Dr. Stock. Easy Foster, if you'll come and present that item. Mr. Sanders, Dr. Stock, and members of the board, it's my pleasure to offer this update to the 2000 bond ref 2008 bond referendum projects. We start with Conroe High School, ninth grade campus. Uh, this campus opens for students on Monday for the start of school. I believe this represents phase three, which is a significant renovation to an existing junior high to make it a ninth grade campus. You can see we've created a bus loop to take buses around the campus rather than through the middle of it. Uh, the inside, as, as I said, is, is essentially complete. No, will be open for students on Monday. And K. Snyder Elementary School, and this project is complete. It opens for students on Monday with the start of school. <clears throat> this project uh, is being loaded currently, uh, so the teachers are in their seventh grade classroom. Uh, Library is being populated, uh, and it is ready for business. John V. Pete and Junior High School, and this campus is complete. It is open for students on Monday. Uh, this is a very nice looking junior high school, and it is being cleaned up. It is being populated with uh, materials and teaching essentials. And it is, it is a campus that uh, we can be proud of as a district. Flex School number 14, this project is about 50% complete. It opens for students in August of 2014. It is on schedule. As you can see, the critical path here is to get the building envelope completed uh, to make it waterproof or water resistant, weather, weatherproof, the interior construction to really take off and commence. Uh, the framing is underway, so you can see what we're looking at here is the, the structure that holds up what is our libraries. Uh, good shot of our gymnasium space. Flex school number 16 it is approximately 45% complete. It is on schedule. It is scheduled to open for students in August of 2014. Again, their critical path, just like Flex 14, is to uh, enclose the building envelope to give us a... Uh, Weather resistant, weather, weatherproof interior. Interior systems are going in place. Conroe High School plumbing repairs. This is uh, to correct a very old uh, pipe installation uh, that had uh, essentially run its course uh, across the street at Conroe High School. This project is complete. Uh, we have restored the Tiger Den where we did the mass ex excavation to its better than original condition. And uh, the rains we've had over the past few weeks have yielded no water in the building. Uh, so uh, it seems to be working as planned. <laughs> Running Elementary is another major project uh, completed over the summer. We expanded the uh, parking lot, improved 
uh, pedestrian and uh, pickup drop-off flow and bus loop for that campus. Uh, we've also expanded the uh, play area to give them a large uh, level surface so they, they can have uh, handle their outdoor activity. That concludes my update for the 2008 calendar. All right, thank you. Thank okay, you, sir. Mr. Foster. Uh, all right, item 6A is adoption of the 2013-2014 official school budget. Dr. Stocks. Mr. Cox, will you come present that item and the items are after? <laughs> Do you mind going through it one more time? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> He's ready. President Sanders, members of the board, Dr. Stockton. Uh, I recommend the Board of Trustees approve the 2013-2014 official school budget as was presented in the public hearing uh, months ago. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion or comments? All right, we'll vote. All in favor? All opposed? Passes unanimously. Good job, Mr. Cox. Yes, yeah. great job. Yeah. Yeah. Item. 6B is consideration, adoption, and set by order or resolution of the 2013 ad valorem tax rate to support the 2013-2014 budget. A is the maintenance and operation tax rate, and B is the debt service tax rate. Mr. President, I move that the uh, property tax rate be increased by the adoption of a tax rate of $1.04, which is effectively 1.6% increase in the tax rate. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion or comments? All in favor? All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Uh, Mr. President, I move that we consider, adopt, and set by word and resolution the 2013 ad valorem tax rate for debt service to 0. 0.245. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion or comments? All in favor? All opposed? That passes unanimously as well. Mr. President, I'd like to point out that that combined tax rate does represent a one half cent reduction tax rate. Appreciate that clarification. Tom is a way of saying it, but it, it's there. Gotcha. All right, 6C is transfer of an unassigned fund balance to the debt service fund and health fund. Dr. Stockton or Mr. Cox? I recommend the Board of Trustees approve the attached resolution authorizing the transfer of $16 million of unassigned fund balance to the debt service fund and an additional $2 million of unassigned fund balance to the health fund. Uh, the fund balance transfer of $16 million is required to service the debt uh, during the 2013-14 fiscal year and minimize the 2013-14 tax rate. In addition, the $2 million required, uh, the, the other $2 million is required to properly fund the district's self-funded health plan as of August 31, 2013. I want to point out that once we make these transfers, the projected fund balance is estimated to be approximately $93 million, which is consistent with what I presented in the so budget moved. presentation. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion or comments? All in favor? All opposed? The motion carries unanimously. Right. Item 5D, Chapter 41 status, select option for wealth reduction. Cox? Yes. Uh, this is an, a, a, an administrative item uh, required by the state. Uh, I recommend the Board of Trustees select option three, purchase attendance credits from the state to reduce its wealth per resident student. Uh, this technically, <coughs> Conroe ISD is uh, classified as a wealthy district because we're over the third tier of the uh, equalized wealth level, which is 319,500. However, you don't actually have to send money to the state unless you're over the first tier, which is uh, projected to be 495000 per WADA. And uh, we're our projected uh, per WADA value is 345923 So we're well below the, the number in which we actually have to transfer money. But the state requires that once you go over uh, the uh, uh, third tier, you, uh, you actually ha you have to start 
adopting this resolution in case the numbers somehow change <laughs> dramatically. So we do this annually now, uh, but uh, we're not anywhere near the level Black Shack Cinema. So I recommend that you approve. President, I move we'll adopt uh, option three. We have a motion. Is there a second? second. We have a motion and second. Any discussion or comments? All in favor? <coughs> All opposed. The motion carries unanimously. And item 6E, financial reports. Dr. Stockton. Yes, Mr. Rice to come to the podium. And as he's coming, I do want to recognize uh, Ms. Tamara Good, who's assistant principal at Knox <laughs> and a summer school principal. Thank you for your service. <laughs> That's a great excuse. <laughs> <It's> a <laughs> great excuse. <laughs> Appreciate you coming tonight. Thank you. Good evening, President Sanders, members of the board, Dr. Stockton. Uh, tonight I'm here to present the financial statements for the district uh, for the month of July 31, 2013. Uh, these statements will be for the general fund, debt service fund, child nutrition, and self-funded insurance. Uh, the first statement we look at is our balance sheet, and the balance sheet includes the assets, liabilities, and fund balances uh, for each of the funds. We always like to look at our uh, cash and short-term investments. Uh, as you can see, cash on hand uh, for the general fund and child nutrition, uh, bank deposits uh, at Wood Forest Bank, and uh, the funds in our external pool funds. We also like to track our property tax collections, uh, right up, bumping right up against the 100%. Confident we'll reach that again this year. Uh, the next statement is the income statement. It shows the revenues and expenditures for the district. Uh, looking at our local revenues, which is our largest uh, revenue source, as you can see, the largest portion of that comes from property taxes in the general fund and debt service fund. And our food service fund, it comes from food sales. And self-funded, it comes from premium contributions. If we wanted to look at our expenditures at the functional level, we can see in the general fund, uh, the majority of our expenditures are in construction. Uh, general fund balance, if you remember last month we came, we had a, we were projecting about a $2 million decrease in fund balance, but as, as we're getting closer to year end and tightening up the numbers, we're looking to get that uh, projected right now to a positive number, about $132,000. Our projection for debt service has not changed since last month. Last month. Uh, Child nutrition fund balance, looking at an increase of about $212,000. Uh, Self-funded insurance. For the year, uh, we have revenues of $28.9 million, million dollars, and we have expenses of $29.7 million, or revenues under expenses currently of $840,000. Um, looking at our CISD Health and Wellness Center uh, participation for the month of July, we had 499 participants uh, for a total of 6,241 for the year, giving us an average of 560. 2008 uh, bond referendum uh, funds encumbered and expended $433 million, are projected to complete $23.2 million, leaving us with about $70 million left of our $527 million bond referendum. Looking at our investments at, at the end of July, uh, when we look where we were in June, at the end of June we had $290 million invested. At the end of July, $256 million. Weighted average maturity was 57 days of the pool. Yield to maturity of our portfolio, 0.0892. And our benchmark, the 90-day T-bill, 0.02. Thank you, Mr. Rice. We appreciate that. All right, item 7A is executive session. Closed session of the board will now be held on matters contained in the notice for this meeting. It's authorized by Section 551.074 of the Texas Open Meetings Act. Should the board determine that any final action, final decision, or final vote be required with regard to any matter considered in such closed or executive meeting or session, then such final action, final decision, or final vote shall be at either A, this public meeting upon the reconvening of this public meeting, or B, at a subsequent public meeting of the board upon notice thereof, as the board shall determine. The closed session of the board will now be held. The time is now 7.11 p.m. Take your time. 7.45, there we go. The item, next item on the agenda is 
item 7A. Which it's mine. It's I'm going to turn that over to Mrs. Gladys. Gladys. Hi, and I had some information item for you. It is three local policies that we're recommending for revision. Um, CDA that deals with our ability to purchase CDs. We're asking that the language be added that would allow us to use other banks besides just our depository bank. Uh, board policy CH is purchasing and acquisition. We were changing the language there to allow for our new electronic bidding system. And in DEA, we were deleted some language that made it appear as though we might not pay all of our um, non-exempt employees for all hours work. We would like for our policy to reflect federal law accurately. So we'll ask that you um, adopt those in All right. Do we have a motion? Motion. It's just information. It's just information. No motion. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I will Sorry withdraw about that. Uh, my item 9B, please. All right. And item 9B is withdrawn. We have movement to adjourn. Second. Second. All Any those in favor, stand up. That's right. <laughs> All in favor can leave, and those that don't want to be in favor can stay. Good job, guys. Thanks for coming. I know that's a fun thing.